This is my full review of the Pixel 8 Pro versus the Galaxy S24 Ultra after the major updates both of these phones received a few weeks ago. Of course, with new updates comes fixes to things that more or less did not work right at the start. We're talking about the display, the cameras, the battery life, software fixes, and so on. There is still a lot of debates on which is better or better yet, which is the better value for money. Hopefully at the end of this video, I answer that question or give you guys a different perspective. Let's get into it. If you're looking for the best Android phone on the market, look no further than the Pixel 8 Pro and the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Now, while they're operating under the same Android umbrella, there are a few features that pit these two phones against each other, like your design, for instance. Yes, we all know design is very subjective, but looking past that and focusing on hardware, there are a few things you need to know. For example, the S24 Ultra is an all flat display with a slightly rounded corner, making it easier to hold or reduce any hand fatigue because let's face it, a 6.8 or a 6.9 inch phone is going to cause you some difficulty holding it every day. Samsung furthermore tried to make the experience worthwhile by making this a titanium phone moving in the same direction with Apple and the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. While the weight of the S24 Ultra is not far off from the S23 Ultra from last year, it definitely feels lighter due to the new material. Which is true, my experience with the S24 Ultra has been very positive. I can use mine mostly without a case, and if I compare it to the S23 Ultra, and you know, when I think about it, that was hell. The bulkiness of the S23 Ultra was a no, and I am happy Samsung did something about it. The stereo speakers are great on the S24 Ultra when you're watching or you're listening to any form of media. The S Pen is, well, the S Pen. It's not exactly the best feature for me as a person. It is an afterthought most of the time, but I respect it and give it the respect it deserves. Would I lose sleep if they removed it? Nope but it is a feature that is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. With the Pixel 8 Pro, one thing I do have to give credit to Google for is making small incremental changes to their design each year to give the phone or to give the Pixel phones a fresh look. The Pixel 8 Pro's matte finish was a great change. It went from having a glass back to a soft finish, making this one of the most comfortable phones to use without a case. And it isn't just about the matte finish. The corners are slightly rounded with an almost flat display which helps with hand fatigue while you're holding the phone. It's not the heaviest phone nor is it the lightest phone but the 217 grams strikes a nice balance for the average consumer. And speaking of incremental changes, the camera bar at the back is slightly different at the back and after a few months, I think this is a better design. However, there are only two issues that I see here. For one, the bar or the camera bar packs a lot of dust or fluff along the way and if it bothers you a lot, you have to clean it constantly. And secondly, the camera bar is also metallic or is it aluminum instead of having that same matte finish that is on the smaller Pixel 8. This is just 5 months in and there are a ton of scratches on this phone. I'm hoping Google changes this with the Pixel 9 Pro. Now there aren't a lot of things Google did wrong with this design. If I had to nitpick this any further, I wish they reduced the bezels just a little bit, especially around the chin. But as a whole, I think the design is great and that goes for the display. The displays have seen great upgrades, especially on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. They added a 2600 nits of max brightness to a phone that had the vision booster feature. Not only that, with the February updates, they gave users the ability to customize how they view the screens in vivid mode by adjusting the color temperature or the white balance and the RGB settings. So if you wanted a more super saturated screen, you could do that. But at the end of the day, for me, I, I just left it the way it was. But it is great for people to have a choice, more or less. On the Pixel 8 Pro, the display is one of the biggest upgrades if you compare it to the Pixel 7 Pro. The brightness has been upgraded massively from 1500 nits on the Pixel 7 Pro to 2400 nits on the Pixel 8 Pro. So the visibility issues I had when going outside with the former phone or with the 7 Pro has been completely fixed. Also fixed is adaptive brightness. It instantly responds to darkness or extreme brightness from the sun, and it is pretty intuitive. The animation on the Pixel 8 Pro is smooth as ever, and I have not noticed any lags in my day-to-day -day use in the last five months. The only time you notice considerable lag is when the display has been reduced to 60 Hz. Most people do that to just save the battery life, 
But apart from that, this is probably the smoothest Android phones or one of the smoothest Android phones on the market right now. Ultimately, by 2024 standards, the display is pretty good and most won't run into any issues. Now, what you might find iffy or disappointing is the fingerprint scanner. It's not exactly the worst I've ever used, but it does contribute to the minor annoyances. With the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 7, we could give it a pass, but almost three years later or four years later, it is time for Google to implement an ultrasonic fingerprint reader. It just makes sense and it just makes the experience worthwhile. Plus, the fact that this shines a bright light each time that you use it, especially at night, is more reasons for Google to do something about it. Now, if you're still watching, a like and a subscription to the channel will be much appreciated. We are close to 20,000 subs, so thank you for your support. It does mean a lot. Now, if we're talking about software experience and how it performs, it is hard to not talk about artificial intelligence, something Google is currently the pioneer or the leader in. We can talk about Tensor and how it isn't great, but I actually give credit again to Google for wanting to create their own ecosystem, their own chipset that makes their phones run the way they want it to run. Now, because I'm not gonna lie, if we're talking about scrolling, the animations, opening apps, amongst other things, it has been a pretty good experience with Tensor. RAM management works just fine, apps respond on time, and mobile gaming experience is satisfactory. When people say the pixels lag, I really wonder if it's just commentary or they have actually spent time with the Pixel 8 Pro. Because with the S24 Ultra, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is obviously far superior, or it has a far superior chipset, but if you compare scrolling and the normal usage, it is on par with Tensor. However, if we're going to go beyond those things, beyond those surface level things, which are also important, then there are a few key areas where you begin to notice the limitations of Tensor. While circuit to search is great, it does take a few seconds for results to show up. Magic Editor is not exactly the fastest thing when it comes to implementing changes. Best take is at best, <laughs> controversial at least. There is shutter lag with each shot you take when you're using the camera, which is very annoying, especially if you're going to take multiple pictures at the same time. Then there's also processing that takes a few seconds with each shot. I mean, I can go on and on, but these are just a few things that bring down the quality of Tensor. While offering seven years of software updates is great, how future-proof is Tensor? How will the performance be in another three to four years? Only time will tell. The S24 Ultra is also good performance-wise. When you begin to see the differences between these chipsets together is when it comes to, say, mobile gaming or better yet, within the camera. With the camera, there's little to no shutter lag on the S24 Ultra. You can keep pressing the shutter button over and over and over again to take as many pictures as you want, and they process very quickly, I might add. The S24 Ultra also has the same AI features as Google, such as circuit to search, object eraser, amongst other things. I will give Google the upper hand here because of how vast their data is, as well as pioneering AI within the Android ecosystem, with rumors saying that Apple even wants to partner with Google for Google's Gemini to work on the new iPhone 16s and furthermore. We'll see how that pans out. Battery life on the Pixel 8 Pro and the S24 Ultra will last you through a full day, more on the S24 Ultra than the Pixel 8 Pro. The new update on the S24 Ultra has optimized this further to give you good battery life. I average 8 to 9 hours of screen on time without even trying to save battery, and on the Pixel 8 Pro is more or less 6 or 7 hours, so like I said, you will get more battery on the S24 Ultra than the Pixel 8 Pro. Okay, let's talk about the cameras. With the new April updates for the S24 Ultra, it brings improvements to low light performance, clarity when zooming into photo mode, and other small incremental changes. Just a little disclaimer, if you did not like the camera quality on Samsung phones generally, this won't really change your mind or your opinion. Either way, in terms of quality, there is one thing that always takes me back to the Pixel phones, and that is True Tone. Skin tone is so important to me, and I think the Pixel 8 Pro nails it every time. Don't get me wrong though, the S24 Ultra has improved from last year, but it isn't quite there yet. If you're a black person or a person of color, you'll notice the difference right away. From the mid wide angle sensor, the S24 Ultra is much more vibrant and colorful compared to the Pixel 8 Pro that depicts more of a natural look. Samsung's picture profile always has more saturation and some people love it, but I'm not really a fan personally. They both have a telephoto lens and they are both good, but Samsung's 3X and 5X does do a better job than the Pixel 8 Pro in that regard. 
the ultra wide lenses are pretty much up there in terms of display and gathering more light that i don't really see a difference between the two when it comes to this video the s24 ultra shoots in 8k while the pixel 8 pro shoots in 4k both of them are pretty good in their own rights especially with good lighting conditions the S24 Ultra begins to show its class in how flexible it can be in terms of turning video or any video into 120 FPS or different settings within pro video mode and many more. Both cameras are good and if it's just taking stills, I would definitely pick the Pixel 8 Pro instead. But if we're going just based on video and how it shoots, the S24 Ultra definitely does it better. So with all that being said, which has the better phone or the better value? This is more of a two-part answer. If we're talking about the better phone, it is no doubt the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It has all the bells and whistles that makes this the best Android phone in 2024 so far. It is why it commands a very expensive price tag of $1,200. Now, if we're talking about value, now we're talking about the Pixel 8 Pro. Value is not a negative thing, by the way. It's about giving people exactly what they want at a great price. The Pixel 8 Pro right now for the month of March 2024, depending when you're watching this, is currently 749 USD and that is a $450 difference. Do you want the best of the best or do you want the best valued phone? Comment down below and let me know. And as always, like and subscribe if you got any value from this video. And thank you guys for watching. My name is KJOS and I'll catch you guys in the next one.